our topic this evening is going to be utilizing 3D printing technology for surgical guides. Um, one point of housekeeping is that uh, Lisa mentioned questions and that you could type those in. If you put the questions in the Q&A spot and not the chat box, so please put questions in the Q&A box and not the chat box, because that will give me just one destination to, uh, to look through as we um, get to the, to the live Q&A at the end of our program today. So um, as Lisa indicated, uh, my name is Mark Clive. I'm a dentist in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. So for those of you that are really good with geography, you'll know that I'm in the Western mountain area of North Carolina. And for those of you that don't know geography really well, you get some idea of where I am in, in the United States. I practice um, with a wonderful team of people. Um, I would say that we have a, an adult restorative dental practice. I have six team members and basically kind of two, two and two in the office where I have two admin team members, two dental assistants and two administrative team. I am going to highlight one of my team members for this session and this team member is Marie. Uh, Marie is a dental assistant that um, is really my partner in 3D uh, technology in the office. Um, particularly 3D printing. The things that I'm going to show you today, kind of our journey through the process of, of 3D printing and surgical guides and, and those sorts of things is led by her. So um, we have a wonderful working relationship. And yet um, many of the things that we run up to from a problem solving standpoint, she usually gets them solved before I have time to sit down and take care of those. So I'm hoping that all of you have a team member in your practice that offers that type of support for you, but um, it, it really is a, a gift for me as a dentist to have a team member that is really strong in this area and enthusiastic in this area as well. Um, again, Lisa mentioned uh, special thanks to Sprint Ray uh, for putting on tonight's seminar. And I'll share a little bit more of my journey and, and how we use Sprint Ray in the office for surgical guides. So I have a few course objectives for our time today, uh, as written in the, in the marketing materials. I'd like to introduce 3D printing and share with you specifically surgical guide manufacturing and what that ecosystem looks like. Um, I believe that that there are a roadmap, there is a roadmap to steps and software that can allow each of us to digitally design surgical guides and prepare them for 3D printing. So I wanna show you some steps through that kind of a, I call it um, self-service and full service when it comes to um, digital design and the software that's necessary. And then I'll share with you some of the cases that we've done that I think, um, show the benefits of, of digital design and 3D printing. And I'll continue by saying that, that I, like most people, have a wish list. And my wish list is that, that in my practice, we can create simple yet efficient workflows. And these workflows can be productive that we can have less inventory of materials that we can get outstanding quality of our printed products. And as I introduced Marie earlier, I think it is important that we develop relationships with our auxiliary team members so that they can partake in this process because I think there are some pretty significant benefits to them. And I also think it's important that we that we recognize that learning is on a continuum. And when we are embarking on something new, we, we, we learn, we gain wisdom in, in a few different ways. And as you may notice in the, 
Um, the third by experience, which is bitterest. And I would say that, that um, most of the significant learning in my life, um, particularly in this space, is, is done by experience. Um, and I'll share with you why that happens. Anybody that is um, kind of on the leading edge of incorporating these technologies, um, I'll show you some pictures. I'll give you some reality of where that is. So where did my journey start with surgical guides and 3D printing? It really started in 2011, 2012, when in my practice, we became a CERAC provider. And the CERAC system that we were using at the time, we combined that with 3D technology, Serona's 3D technology, and um, we started placing implants in the practice. So went through the training and I was really um, excited about offering implant services to patients, specifically with the use of guided technology. So using, taking a CBCT of a patient, cone beam image of the patient and scanning the patient, putting those two pieces together and having a guide fabricated. And interestingly, for those who have been doing it um, quite a long time, like I have, the most practical way for us to fabricate guides back in 2011, 2012 was um, to take the scan of the, the x-ray scan, to take the scan of the patient, merge those two pieces together, and send it to Germany to have the guide fabricated. So that's that's where I started on this path. And so we could electronically send the information. And if we passed all the tests for SciCat, they would send us a guide. And it was approximately like 275 or $300 for a guide and another $45 for two or three day international shipping. And so that was where we began in the guide process. And I'm happy to say that, that those initial implant placements were successful. The, the guide process was successful, but it was incredibly cumbersome and you know, the reality is, is that has an impact on fees that you charge and kind of the bottom line. And if there are ever any corrections to make, like, oh, I, I've looked at this CBCT again, I'd like to put the implant here. Well, then you'd have to start that process over. And typically the journey through fabrication for a guide like this at the time was probably about eight to 10 days. And those processes have changed and they've gotten faster. And kind of the next iteration of guides through the CERAC world became guides that were milled out of a out of a guide block. Here you get an example of what this looks like. And um, it was not something. This was not part of the journey that we went on in our practice. Was was milling our own guides using the the CERAC milling machine. And mainly that was because most of the most of the resources that I had at the time were saying, boy, this is really um, a heavy load on the equipment and motors are failing in the milling machines and it's super messy. And, you know, it was it was a lot of workarounds to get around that process. And so I pretty much went from manufacturer designed guides right to the idea that we were gonna print them in our office and not try and mill guides in our office. And that was our, that was our journey. So my first um, printer was um, Sprintray's original product, the Moonray S, and this became quite a workhorse in our practice. And what we discovered was that we could open up printing, not just in surgical but guides, but models and, and um, uh, you know, trays and all kinds of things. I mean, it really allowed us to explore what was possible in that space. 
And um, there were no systems, full systems in place at this time. So mainly we were taking everything that we could find on the internet with regards to how do we, how do we process models? This happens to be a, an orthodontic setup as an example, but we had to remove resin. That was the biggest mess. And to be honest with you, this is what it looked like when we first started printing, printing guides, printing models, um, printing bite splints. And, you know, at, at, at the time we were, you know, we were using 91% alcohol, by the way, 91% alcohol is about the lowest concentration of alcohol that you want to use. And um, so processing this um, was messy, but the good news was that we were, we really were getting a great product and it wasn't taking us 10 days and it wasn't costing us $300 to get there. And, you know, we were curing it in a, in a UV lamp that you would typically see at a uh, nail salon. So washing was cumbersome, curing was cumbersome, but we were getting a good product. Um, by the way, now we're, we use 99.5% alcohol. And um, so we're, we really get a, a wonderful wash of the, of the excess resin off of the materials, the guides, and we'll talk a little bit about more about that. And I would say we got good results. Um, it was it was again messy, and um, certainly not what we were looking for. But it was it was the best that we had at the time. And for any of you who have have seen Everett Rogers' work on the diffusion of innovation, he basically says that that um, all things that we um, pretty much anything in the electronic world, for sure. We have innovators and early adopters, and those people tend to experiment with the newest things. And then the majority of people, whether they're the early majority, the late majority of the laggards, they, they jump in when there are complete solutions. And I would say today, what's wonderful about the printing space and the technology that we have access to with regards to surgical guides, um, we have com com complete solutions in place. And I think that that's a fabulous place to be. So here's an example. This is part of the workhorse um, products that we use in our practice today. Um, Sprint Ray Pro 55. We also have a Pro 95 printer. We have a wash and dry station, which I think is um, just an outstanding. Um, I, I'll say that it's still my favorite piece of equipment in the office and, and curing station that is um, certainly cures models at a much faster rate than where we started with the UV light from the nail salon. And now I would say the results that we get are excellent. And, um, and that's a, a statement based upon, you know, starting where we started in our practice. We've been doing this now for, you know, six years. And the reality is, is we feel like the systems that we have in place um, help us run smooth. And I will also share with you that, that, um, that all of us that start on journeys like this, I think have exceedingly high expectations. So that's the uh, peak of inflated expectations, I think is what I call this. And, and then we end up in the trough of disillusionment because we think, oh my gosh, this is gonna be awesome. And then we find out, well, it is gonna be some work. And that's, that's where my team member Marie comes in. It, it feels like she really did quite a bit of the hefty, heavy lifting in that stage. And now I feel like we've got this plateau of productivity where things seem to be moving along nicely. And my hope is that um, by the time that we spend together today, that I can, I can um, create clear expectations so you don't sit in one spot um, in the future and think, oh, I should have been there and I should have got there faster. So I'm hoping to, to um, shorten the timeline for those of you that, um, that want to get to the productivity spot as fast as you can. 
because the reality is um, I think we can all get there with a little bit of information. So why, why do I print my own surgical guides? Why do we use the 3D technology that we do in our office? And um, I'll share that with you, at least from my perspective, when I think of the list of why do this, I think um, in-house manufacturer is incredibly cost-efficient, cost-effective, and the, our ability to manufacture something that's ready for a surgical procedure is incredibly quick. And I, I do like the ability to archive everything that we have. I mean, if I decide not to keep a plastic surgical guide in my office, I could throw it in the trash and I could make another one in an hour. And um, if I needed to for a future, you know, a future um, situation, but the reality is we can archive this stuff very easily. And I think the, the, the way that we can get patients through this process, through this design process and increase the use of auxiliary team really makes this a phenomenal situation. And we will always continue to, to battle. We dentists will always continue to battle between, you know, efficiency and cost. Well, it costs this much to do this and it costs this much to do that. And um, I'm a business person. I, I look at my business and the numbers of my business very closely. Um, so I feel like I've got a good finger on return on investment. And you know, I think each of us is in the situation of, you know, when, when do we pull the trigger? When is the right time? Um, how can I make this as efficient as possible? And, and I will tell you that on average, if we look at the statistics from the ADA and statistics from the ADA I always lag a couple of years. Um, so I want you to be aware of that. But the average practice is spending 10% of their collections on uh, lab, lab services. So um, anything that we can do in improving our efficiencies of Printing surgical guides, as an example, um, reduces that percentage and makes us more um, profitable, which I think is really important. So um, be aware of that. Be aware of what your numbers are, and that will that will help you get there. So what are we printing in our office today? We're printing, just as an overview, we're printing models. We're printing um, models for orthodontic in-house orthodontic alignment. We're printing surgical guides where we're gonna spend most of our time today and we're also printing bite splints, but we're gonna focus, focus our attention on guides. So in the surgical guide workflow, we basically are gonna take two pieces of data. We're gonna take a scan of the patient's mouth. We're gonna combine that with a CBCT and we're going to merge those two pieces of data. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different pathways to do that. One I call self-service, the other I call full service. Um, so how do we do that in our practice? I have, um, we are still a CEREC provider in our office, um, but I have actually moved away from some of the um, closed architecture of Serona and gone to more of the open arch architecture of CareStream. So while we have a um, scanner and milling unit that is um, a CEREC product, um, we're also using a CareStream scanner and a CareStream CBCT because I like that, that merge of those two. And I like the fact that that um, that is it's really an open source system and not not closed off. So how do we how do we take these two pieces of information? What does this look like? Well, from a care stream standpoint, um, scanning and uh, the CBCT, we put those together using a software called Blue Sky Plan. So Blue Sky Plan is made by manufactured or or um, owned by a company, I believe out of Chicago called um, Blue Sky Bio. And Blue Sky Bio has implant parts. I, I think they were an implant company when they first formed and they make um, various types of implants which are, are compatible with 
Nobel and compatible with Strawman and most of the major um, implant companies out there. And again, it's open source. It's actually a free software that you can download and you only pay for kind of price per use. And I think it's, um, I think it's an efficient software to use an effective software to use. And there are many others. So you could take CBCT information and scan information and use ExoCAD. You could use three shape. Um, so at this point we're using blue sky plan and um, I'll kind of share with you what that workflow looks like. And I will tell you that the workflow, um, no matter what software you're using, the workflow is gonna look somewhat similar. So you're gonna see examples of um, today of blue sky plan, you're gonna see um, examples of three shape. So those that's that's what you'll see together. So most of you have seen um, scanning and kind of where we are at with scanning at this point. So, um, you know, the reality is from a scanning standpoint, we can scan in color um, incredibly accurately, incredibly fast. And, um, you know, the benefits to the practice and to the patient, I think are, are numerous. I don't think I necessarily need to go through that um, you know, that process. So just to kind of see this close up, this is a CS, CareStream CS3700 um, camera. And, um, you know, our ability to take scans in, you know, uh, approximately two minutes, I think is pretty, um, pretty reasonable from a scan standpoint. And we can get there and we can get excellent results in a really short period of time. So that's scanning that. So that from the scan, you're going to get an S what's um, what's called an STL file. And you're going to use that in the software um, that's going to help you design your guide. Okay. So, so we had this CareStream scanner. This is a CBCT from the, uh, an image from the, from the uh, CareStream CBCT that we use. And um, I believe that most CBCT softwares are similar. Um, companies will, will um, certainly um, show you examples. These, this is from a patient that we scanned here a couple of days ago. Um, but the reality is, is the scanning technology that's available us, to us today, I think is outstanding. And um, again, what, what my preference, at least in my experience of working with the CareStream CBCT is I get excellent quality in an open source um, software and it plays nicely with pretty much all the things that I like to use in the office. So, um, so that's the CBC, that's the CBCT um, uh, information. So in Blue Sky Plan, now we take the scan that we took of the of the arch and the CBCT X-ray image, and we merge those two things together. So I'm going to I'm going to show you what this looks like in about maybe two and a half minutes, and how we're how we're um, placing and fabricating pl placing implants virtually, and then fabricating a guide that we're going to use. So I'm just going to kind of narrate this video as we go. So the first thing we're going to do is. We, we imported the patient's x-ray, and now we're gonna import the patient's scan of their arch, and we're gonna link these two files together. So now these two files are, are linked together, and we're gonna basically make the, the x-ray go away in one window, kind of this lower left window. And because we're gonna do this prosthetically um, driven, we're gonna place the teeth in the arch. Um, so these are just, um, you know, basically uh, ghosts of teeth aligned the way that we'd like to see them aligned in the arch um, with the idea that we're gonna be placing for this patient, we're gonna be placing two implants. So um, one implant is going into a, um, an immediate extraction site a premolar, and one is going to go into a molar site. So now once the once we have the teeth in place, now we're going to go ahead 
and drop the implants in place where we want them based upon the positions of these um, the positions of these teeth that we have uh, determined the location. So again, this is prosthetically driven implant placement, all done in all done in three dimensions. And um, we can, once we get the uh, implant fixtures where we want them, we can do any further tweaks or anything like that with this, with this software, okay? So I'm lucky to have a team member who can um, merge these pieces of information together and then I can place the implants and then now um, Marie is back to the situation where she is going to um, do the guide design. So she is going to trim around, um, create the outline of where she's going to, um, how she's going to fabricate this guide. And then I get to um, approve that. And then from there, you'll see um, that the, the guide will be, um, the surgical guide will be um, fabricated. And now what she's gonna do is go ahead and add some windows in this so that it's designed so that there are cutouts so that we can see that the guide is fully seated in multiple locations. So this is all about, for me, this is all about accuracy. Um, pretty much every guide that you have fabricated is going to have windows in it. You can decide how many you want. You can decide where you want those. But the whole idea of that is to um, create a situation where you can confirm that the guide is fully seated so that the placement is appropriate. So at this point, this, this guide is now fabricated. We are able to choose the guide system that we're using as far as drill size and, and stuff. And at, at this point, we can then take this guide and bring it to the printer. And I'll show you that here in the next slide. But we're working with you know, guide placement um, system that allows us to, to choose the size of hole that's going to be in the guide so that we can, as soon as the guide is printed and washed and dried, we can slide a, a metal sleeve. You'll get to see that in a, in a future slide here. You, we're, we're sliding a metal sleeve in place that's gonna be, that's gonna drive our surgical procedure. So here's what that guide looks like. What's nice about um, these printer beds is that depending upon how you position the guide, you can actually do multiple guides on one platform, depending upon what the, the um, workflow and production system is like in your office. So multiple guides can be printed on one platform. And here's an idea of what that guide looks like that's, that's um, ready, for, um, ready for placement, ready for implant placement. So all the components, the windows, the metal sleeves, um, the periphery of that guide that we fabricated, all of that is now ready to take to the mouth for surgery. So here's what it looks like. Um, for those of you that are interested, these are um, five by 10 millimeter implants. One uh, implant in the premolar area, the anterior implant was um, placed in an immediate site. And the other implant is basically placed in a molar position. And um, kind of that's, that's the process of, of the guide from start to finish. So let me show you another example. This is a patient that was um, kind of a victim of COVID out of the practice for like 14 months, um, came back in with a lesion underneath an existing bridge and a failing root canal. And between the, the endodontist and I, we agreed that this tooth was not salvageable. Interestingly, the patient um, was in, interested in implant placement. And you know, his first discussion was, can we do another bridge? And I said, not, not possible, but we could. 
Um, we could place another implant, but we've got the issue with a very low uh, sinus cavity. So we have to do a lateral window augmentation um, for, for implant placement. So um, this is an image on the day that the augmentation was done, tooth was taken out, this area was healed. Um, this is an example again of, of blue sky plan. We take the, just in exactly the same steps as we did before, we take the CBCT information um, from our, our care stream CBCT. We put it together with the STL file of the scan of the patient's upper arch, and we design the implant placement um, from start to finish, basically tooth. We, we place the teeth in just like you saw. So it's prosthetically driven. We get the implants exactly the place in, in the area that we want them. This is what it looks like. Um, the surgical guide, printed surgical guide at the time of surgery. You can see, if you look at the areas where the, where the windows were created, you can see this guide is fully seated exactly the way that we want it on the surfaces of the teeth so that we know that the plan that we've created is um, certainly within reason. Um, this is with the guide in place, getting ready for, for tissue punch. And um, so here's uh, tissue punch at the time of surgery. And I think the next image is with the implants now in place. So holes were done, implants are placed. And I am always referencing the guide. So taking the guide and putting it back in place to confirm the placement of the implants. And again, in my world, when I see the implants and the direct centers of my, of my guide, I, can, I know that I've determined what the apical position is. So I know that I'm not into the sinus. And I know that the positions of these implants based upon the bone level are exactly where I want them to be. So um, another example of utilizing 3D print technology for a surgical guide, having it be prosthetically driven. And in my world, the, the speed and accuracy that I can do this um, is just an extra level of comfort. So um, here's the position of these. These are, are five by eight millimeter implants. Um, placed in that um, in those two locations. Again, one of those is a graft site, um, lateral window sinus lift graft site. Um, so um, again, just other examples of surgical guides that we fabricated in the office. And again, um, this, this workflow, I think, is efficient for all of us, depending upon the software that we choose to use. So again, to me, what success looks like in the midst of you know, finishing a placement is realizing that I've got the implant in exactly um, all the dimensions. Um, in three dimensions, I get that implant exactly where I want it, and it's prosthetically driven. So the, the tooth form, the tooth shape, is going to be exactly um, where I want it. So here's another case that I wanted to share that um, was done with my specialist, um, my A plus periodontist, and we fabricated the guide. The planning was done with him. He does not have a 3D printer in his office. So we fabricated the guide and he helped me with the placement of these implants in the practice. Um, and on the left, the left image shows the position of the implants in six, eight, nine, and 11. And we used, in the interim, we used teeth seven and 10 and the premolars on each side um, to, for prosthetic convenience. So um, the goal was for him to get through this transition surgery um, using, using some teeth that had a hopeless prognosis, but we were able to use the teeth seven and 10 to help um, uh, hold up a, a fixed prosthesis that would offer aesthetics and phonetics and mastication function. 
And um, so even if you are in your practice and you work with specialists, you have the opportunity to be able to provide something for them that allows you and your patient's visit to go as smoothly as possible. So this is just an example of, of you know, the, with, with his help, we were able to create a, an aesthetic and biologically appropriate restorations for him. We ended up doing implant placements on the upper and the lower and, um, you know, create adequate um, anesthetic tissue contours. And this is what an example of what the final restorations look like when they were in place. But even again, even working with your specialists, you have the opportunity to, to, to make that workflow um, work to your advantage, as well as to the advantage of your specialist and of course your patient. So the second option, so I showed you the self-service option. And that was, again, Blue Sky Plan software. You could use ExoCAD, you could use 3Shape, you could, I mean, there's, there's lots of softwares out there that you could use. And I wanna share with you a full service option that I think is, is, um, is also helpful for us to have as dentists. And this is an option that, um, that Sprint Ray offers their clients who have Sprint Ray products. And basically in the full service option, you're gonna plan um, you're going to plan the treatment. The treatment in this case is going to be a surgical guide. You're going to upload patient data. So um, again, if you're fabricating a surgical guide or you, you want the full service option from a from fabrication standpoint, you're going to upload the CBCT from your patient, from your x-ray. You're going to add, um, upload your STL file from your scan. You're going to choose what printer you're using, and you're going to choose the um, the resin that you're using, and you're going to you're going to give Sprint Ray a timeline as far as this is how long this is going to take, or this is this is when I need this done, and then you're going to have the ability to communicate with the design experts. They're going to um, they're going to come up with a plan for you. It's going to be a prosthetically driven plan. I'm going to show you an example and how it works in our practice. And um, you'll be able to live chat with them. And once the design is ready, they're going to, you're going to be able to just um, take that right to your printer and print it and know that everything is incredibly accurate to do that. So you get your design file your design file allows you to um, take it right to the printer. So there's no, there are no other steps for you to have to, to, um, to jump through and you don't even need a computer to do it. So here's an example of a case that we did in the practice that um, was a full service option. So, um, so the, the, the Sprint Ray partner that we worked with, um, you'll see the, the, the doctor that put this um, program or put this um, design together for me used three shape. So you're gonna see that it's prosthetically driven. I'm showing you just some, some images to start. Um, the drill system that we chose to use in fabrication of the guide was um, a pilot hole. So a three millimeter pilot hole, um, pilot hole system. This is an example of of uh, what the final guide design looked like. And here's that same guide design from a different angle. So I wanted to show you that as an example. And again, here's kind of the surgical report that you get that shows the positions of the implants and um, the type of implants that are gonna be used in this, in this case. So I also, um, it's, it reminds me of different systems out there that we have in dentistry where, where um, you get to see um, the design and how it's put together. So the design was shared with me um, in video format. And the doctor that put this together shared with me 
um, in voice all the things that he was thinking about as he put this together. So again, it's it's prosthetically driven. He has taken the 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 STL scan and the CBC scan and and merged those two together, and it's a perfect merge. All of those green dots, all that green color is, says that it's um, within 25 of uh, hundreds of a millimeter. So this is the position of what these implants look like in space. You can see kind of the safety zone that's there and you can also see in the red circle, you can see the where the nerve is. So again, all of this is provided for you in the full service option. Again, you see the, the position of the forward implant. Um, you'll see the position of the rearmost implant and um, there's the rearmost imprint. Again, you see the safety zone, you see where the nerve is, and you see how this case was, was prosthetically driven, designed from, from start to finish in that, in that fashion. So if you decided that you didn't want to use a pilot hole, you wanted to use some other sleeve, you get to decide what type of sleeve system, whatever type of surgical system you're used to using, is going to um, is going to be an option for you. So this is just what we what we chose to do. Okay. So there's just another view, and again another view of what this looks like and and what the final outcome, uh, what you expect the final outcome to be. So that's an image just showing the the distance from the nerve for four and a half millimeters from the nerve in this case, and again here is the. Here is the, um, the design of the guide for this patient and for this surgical procedure. And lastly, again, you get a full surgical report that says these are the implants that are gonna be placed. This is gonna be the location. This is where the nerve is. Um, this is where the bone density is based upon the CBCT information. But that's a full rundown of the, of the uh, full service option. So here's what the, the surgical guide looks like in place. Again, um, windows cut out. You can see, um, you can see these areas where the cutouts are. That that um, the guide is a perfect fit, um, extremely accurate. You know that when you take your your pilot drills in, you're going to get exactly um, the angles and things that you need because you know that this implant uh, guide was. The surgical guide was well manufactured, well designed and well manufactured. Here's the position of the implants, um, full integration of the implants here. And um, these are two um, restorations that, um, utilizing a, a CEREC uh, tie base, but you can see the tissue form that we have with these um, ready for these restorations is exactly how I want to have it in my practice. Here's a, an example of what these restorations look like when they're in place. And um, this patient um, does have the ability to use lots of power. So we did um, finish this case with a, um, a uh, anatomic bite splint. Um, most of you have seen that before. So again, the advantage of the full service situation is, is um, this this planning software is um, you, you basically uh, have the, the planning team do this for you. So you're gonna scan the patient, you're gonna get the x-ray information, you're gonna upload that information to the team. They will use CAD software to plan it for you. You'll be able to um, oftentimes in an incredibly short period of time within 24 hours. I don't remember exactly what the guarantee is, but, but um, you'll be surprised at how quickly this comes back for you. And then you can, you can print this, wash this and post-process this and have it ready um, in no time at all. So um, that's, the, that's the full service option. What you do when you're done, um, printing it and washing it and drying it, we place the sleeves in place and then we're ready. The, 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 the appliance is, is placed for surgery. And if you think about time 
saving time and saving money for these types of scenarios. Um, to me, it is just a pleasure to be able to plan treatment with a patient and not have to think about multiple, multiple days in order to get something that would be ready for surgery. So it was not uncommon in my early days to think that that I was spending at least $350 to have a guide. And it would, it was certainly not two days. A lot of times it was more like eight days. It depending upon sometimes longer if it got caught up in customs on the way back from Germany. Um, and the reality today is that we can print these guides um, in an extremely short period of time with, with, um, with low cost. Obviously there's, there's some um, startup cost, but the return on investment of 3D printing materials in, in a dental practice is, it has to be one of the lowest, um, or excuse me, one of the highest return on investments that there is. So um, I did tell you that I thought the, the wash station was the, uh, was my favorite, favorite apparatus. And mainly because of this, I can take this, this, um, this uh, plate, the printing plate, I can put it right into the, the, the wash station and it will wash and dry those models in, in, an extremely short period of time. And then when we're taking models off of, or surgical guides off the, the print platform, they're all clean and dry at the same time. So again, one of the other advantages of what SprintRay has put together is, is they have this cloud system for, for design. I've shared some of that um, with you, but there is, um, you can do um, smile design, you can do uh, bite splint design, all of that through their dashboard system. And um, you can communicate directly with designers and you can um, record uh, the patient's history and their files and all that stuff is, is kept in the cloud for you in a way that is, that is efficient. And you know all of that can be uh, driven with software and organized in your practice so that you have basically a, a kind of a push and play when it comes to um, when it comes to design and fabrication. So, um, depending upon the um, what the needs of your practice are, I really do think there are ways that we can be utilizing um, 3D printing technology for surgical guides. I've given you a couple of different ways that you can do that. Um, there are self-service options. Like I said, there's, there's softwares out there that can merge these pieces of data together to allow you to get um, efficient, effective uh, outcomes. And, um, and we're, at a, we're at a time now when I think you can jump into this space and whether you need some help to start and maybe you wanna you wanted have some full service help to begin, but but, and maybe you'll do your first 10 or 15 cases that way. And then you'll maybe you'll use Blue Sky Plan or, or ExoCAD or 3Shape or something like that. Um, I do think that the, that the possibilities out there are, are endless. And Dr. Um, Clive, is there uh, a way that attendees can contact you or email you afterwards in case they think of a question they have for you after tonight's program? Absolutely. And I apologize for not uh, putting that on this slide, but my email address is mark, M-A-R-K, at blackmountaindentist.com. So black, B-L-A-C-K, mountain, M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N, dentist, D-E-N-T-I-S-T.com. And I love getting emails from folks, even if they think, um, even if they think that I might not want to answer them. I think the reality is it's my job as 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 a uh, as an educator is to make sure that people get the information that they need to make good decisions. Um, so, question. Um, what is the cost of the wash, dry system, printer, and cure? I, here's what I can tell you with regards to um, cost. That um, right now, it's the system 
um, both both Patterson and Shine and Sprint Ray are ha have pricing in mind that's based upon having all three of those things together. So um, I don't I don't know what exact pricing is. I don't want to comment on exact pricing, but all you need to do is reach out. Any of us here in the U.S. just would need to reach out to our Patterson or Shine representative and ask them directly. And um, uh, that's that's how I would do that. So um, you'll you'll be able to you'll be able to handle that. Um, Shine and Patterson can handle that. Another question, is SprintRay the only system available? Why did you pick SprintRay? Um, interestingly, I've tested, um, I've tested printers from a couple of other manufacturers. And what I can tell you is that um, everything that I have from SprintRay in my office, the, the, printing, the printing units and the cure units, um, we have paid full price for, um, and I have tested other units. Um, the reason I like Sprint Ray system is to me, it's the best full system together that handles the production that we do in our office. So there are lots of, of, I mean, there must be 10 different manufacturers of 3d printing, um, uh, systems out there. And I've tested a couple of other ones. And I think what we're, what I'm seeing is I'm gonna pay my money. My full price money is um, currently right in the hopper of, 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 of Sprint Ray because of their full system and how I think it manages the production in our office. So I've seen printers that print faster. I've seen printers that, um, uh, you know, but they only handle one device at a time, and that's just not efficient in my practice. Um, another question, what kind of ongoing maintenance is required for printer wash cure units? Um, great question. Um, most of what we have to do is make sure that, that most of the maintenance um, that we run across is just like um, when we're switching resin tanks and stuff like that is cleaning and straining resin. So, um, beyond that, there really isn't much else to do um, with regards to, to ongoing maintenance. So, um, and Lisa, I see that in the chat, you also put my email address in there. Thank you for doing that. That's wonderful. Um, well, Lisa, I see no other questions. Thank you um, for hosting this lovely event. Thank you. Thank Catapult for hosting this wonderful, wonderful event. Thanks again to Sprint Ray for, for sponsoring this, this, um, this session. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, to me directly if there are ways that I can help support any of you in your process. And my hope is that I teased a little bit about what's possible with 3D printing technology for surgical guides. I do, I do believe that now is a great time to jump into this space with so many options available for efficiency and effectiveness. So thank you very much. And to everyone out there, have a great rest of your day.